Okay, well, um, do you guys want to go ahead and get started since we're a couple minutes after? No, yeah, we've got quite a lot of people. All right, who wants to introduce themselves first? <laughs> all right, we can all introduce ourselves. So I'm Lauren Persons and I use she, they pronouns and I am a moderator for Right Hive and I invited all of my mentorship family along to give a mentorship talk today. So we can go ahead and go around the circle and everyone else introduce themselves. I'll go next. Um, hi, I'm Andrew Sass, I write under my initials AJ. Uh, I use he and they pronouns, and I have um, a book coming out on October 20th called Anna on the Edge, uh, just in a couple of weeks now. It's a middle grade contemporary from Little Brown Books for Young Readers. And this is my cat, Amato. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, hi, I'm Gina Gonzalez. I am a right mentee. I'm Lauren's, I call her my sibling, <laughs> my right mentee twin. Um, I am a creative director when I'm not writing, and this is my first year in Write Mentor. All right, well, hey, everybody. Thank you so much for your continuing patience with me. Um, I'm Hannah Cates. You didn't get to see me yesterday, but you get to see me today. Um, I am have been a Write Mentor for two years now. I have co-mentored with Andrew. I've been lucky enough to co-mentor with Andrew for the last two years. It's just been a blast. And um, I am on sub right now with my agent, so. Fingers crossed. I, oh, I've got news. I'll, I'll send you guys a private message later, but. That's exciting. Yeah, so all of us are kind of at different stages in our writing career. Um, as Andrew and Hannah said, they are both agented. And uh, Andrew's book is coming out here soon, and Hannah is on sub, and Gina and I are um, in the process of querying. So uh, we're all just, you know, at different stages in the process. But um, I think all of us expressed a lot of interest in mentorship at different stages in our journey. So we're going to kind of get into that and talk about why we pursued mentorship, um, both as mentors and mentees and uh, how we came to find the current mentorship program that we're in, which is Write Mentor. And if I can make just a so, quick plug for Andrew's book, because I know he's not gonna do it himself, like yeah. Anna on the Edge yeah. is fantastic. I got to read it early. Um, I got to listen to a snippet of the audiobook that's coming out. And if you guys haven't pre-ordered, I really wanna encourage you. It's an amazing story about a, um, a non-binary ice skater coming into this building's roman through sports and i haven't read anything that powerful in a really long time so if you guys can go to amazon and you want to support andrew and you know the amazing things that he does like absolutely pre-order anna on the edge because it is well worth your time to read it's a fantastic book thank you i have it pre-ordered and i'm super looking forward to it very excited um, so let's go ahead and start with the mentors. How about, um, how did you guys hear about mentorship programs and decide that that was something that you need to participate in? Do you want me to go first, Anna? Yeah, yeah. Okay. You're alphabetically first, so. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, um, yeah, it, it's interesting because before I actually got into Write Mentor, I was a mentee myself back in 2018. Just a couple of months earlier than that, I really hadn't ever gotten feedback on my writing. I was very shy about it. And I had actually taken an online writing class um, through the Children's Book Academy on middle grade writing that required as part of the homework that you trade pages with other people and, and get critique and apply feedback that speaks to you. So I had gotten a little bit of a taste of that and I was really excited about it. And I had a very rough draft of what would become Anna on the Edge in spring of 2018. And I'd heard about Pitch Wars, I think through Twitter, some people have been talking about it and I thought, well, that sounds like a fantastic program. So I was looking at doing that, but the timeline didn't match up with where I wanted to be with the book by the end of the summer. I think Pitch Wars subs opened up at the end of the summer and they wouldn't actually start looking at um, querying agents until the following spring. So. I, I lucked out and found Write Mentor somehow, probably through like a hashtag on Twitter and the sub window was opening in like a week. So I applied and I was fortunate enough to get to work with um, my mentor, Caroline Murphy, who um, a couple other mentors have said intimidate them. So they didn't know how I handled her, but I actually 
she was like a, I don't know, I'm like a drill sergeant. It worked really well, a writing drill sergeant. And she was able to pinpoint areas that I wouldn't have seen myself because I was too close to the material. She is not trans, so she also had questions that um, I wouldn't have seen from my own perspective, I think, um, that I could kind of incorporate or maybe address in the book um, that I hadn't thought of. And mentorship for me is like, a really intense uh, critique partner relationship with someone who is just a little bit further along in the process than you are um, with writing. So Caroline already had an agent. Uh, She knew what it was like to revise. And it was a really fantastic experience for me just to have deadlines and to know someone was waiting for my work to be coming back to them and would really call me out if I had like skirted around certain things that I didn't want to address. So yeah, it was a really good process for me that summer and it kind of made me want to give back, which is why I ended up applying to be a mentor in 2019 with Hannah. Sorry for the cat tail. <laughs> you guys might hear like some crashes later on. It's because like both cats are like sort of wandering the desk and the desk has a bunch of stuff on it. So sorry in advance if there's like cluttering and clattering going on around here. For the rec- I think the cat tail just enhances it the record. I, I appreciate it. Um, let's see, goodness gracious. Well, I was at a very strange place um, when I got into the Bright Mentor program. Uh, my debut book was actually supposed to uh, come out in 2018. It was an Artemis Fowl cross with Buffy the Vampire Slayer. And I had signed it with a publisher that no longer exists now. It was a mid-sized house. And three weeks before my debut, um, they announced that they were going out of business and they were dropping my book. I was very lucky. I got all the rights back, but I was, um, I was living in France at the time and I was just crushed. Like I was ready to burn everything. I'd gotten really lucky with the editor. I've actually met her at a conference and we had hit it off really well. So I wasn't agented. I had met the editor directly and she had accepted my book in two weeks. So I was like, Oh man, the universe is giving this to me. Like this is meant to be. And I was just, so crushed on a soul level when that happened. Um, Looking back, it's been such a huge blessing uh, because I was, you know, between crying and drinking lots of French wine and eating cheese, um, I found Right Mentor on the very last day that it was open for submissions in 2000. Wow. (laughs) And so I'm like beside myself, like weeping groups of mascara into my cheese. It, it, it really stood out to me. It was, it was very, um, very timely that I found it on the last day. And I was like, man, okay, fine. If this, if this is what's dished out, like I'll play these cards. Let's see if this is meant to be, I'm going to go ahead and see if this is the next step. And I actually got um, accepted by the fabulous Marissa Noel, who has written, uh, she's written 21 books now. And it was just incredible because I felt like I had an in, you know, like we're all waiting for that magic pill. With my first book, I felt like, oh man, you know, I hit it. I just struck gold. I met the editor who absolutely loves me and she's going to publish all my books and she wants to publish all my books. Um, But even fairy tales can go awry. (laughs) And Marissa, she had been through multiple agents. She had been through multiple publishing houses and just to meet somebody, um, the apocalypse key, my 2018 book was my eighth book. So I felt like I had like put in my time, you know, but she's like, oh yeah, I've written 19 and I'm shopping for another agent. And I, that just blew my mind to find out that, you know, everybody's path is so different. And for a lot of people, you know, it's not a, a directly from A to B. People go through multiple agents. People go through multiple publishers. I know an author who has even legally changed her name <laughs> to get into another publishing house. So um, I definitely had the the discipline, but Marissa was more like that super cool guiding aunt who's like, wash your face, honey, like calm down. We're going to get this shit done. But she was very focused and gave me this very grounded, rational approach to the querying and submission process, which I didn't know I would need. Um, absolutely learning to trust the process to ground myself in my skill and learn to um, really take hold of the things that I can control. The only thing I can control is writing kick-ass books. That's the absolute only thing 
that I can do is be my absolute best and everything else, you know, it's, you can make opportunities for yourself, but it's really been me learning to let go of the process. And Marissa was a wonderful guide uh, through that. Actually didn't end up getting, um, I, I wasn't agented in the right mentor showcase, which it was hard because my right mentor sister actually was, and she had written a very similar book to mine. So again, I was just absolutely crushed. Like maybe I just don't make the cut. Um, but actually two months later, after writing another book, that book got picked up by my agent and she ended up shopping the, uh, the penultimate book that I had written before for me anyway. So uh, I've had a very strange and I want to say like non-traditional journey through submission and querying. But I'm very grateful. Marissa, um, she's just reading one of my books right now. Still, we still keep in touch. I still virtually cry on her shoulder whenever we get a rejection. So what I really appreciate about mentorship and what I really hope to for, provide to other people is just this um, grounded, rational view that your journey isn't going to look like anybody else's. Um, what happens, how you get published, your road will not be the same. And that's okay. What all you can do is take yourself for who you are, lean into your skills and do the absolute best that you can. And I promise guys, the only way to fail at this process is to quit. That's super inspiring. (laughs) You guys have just had, like you said, very different journeys, but like so interesting. And and like you said, you just kind of have to stick with it through and just keep trying. Uh, You know, it's, it's not an easy path we've chosen to try to get agented and traditionally published. I'm debating moving to Canada and just becoming a syrup farmer instead. Definitely (laughs) high on my list of things to do. Uh, So Gina, how about uh, you tell us what your process was like for finding Right Mentor? Sure. Um, So I started writing in 2014 and I wrote one novel and I was very excited about it through NaNo and I wrote it again in the nano the following year and I polished it for like two years and then I submitted it and I got like 40 rejections and after that I was like I do not know how to do this (laughs) this is taking forever and it's just kind of like it's a craft you know and I feel like to me whenever I'm we have a writing group and whenever we have new writers I always tell them it's like building a house. You see houses all the time. So in your head, you're like, I can build a house. And then you start getting in there. You're like, so the toilet shouldn't go in the kitchen. Um, and it actually needs stairs to get us. To, like, we don't know <laughs> the actual building blocks of how to build a novel. And so we really went into craft and I was like, I got to get someone that can like help me guide my way. Cause my writing group was amazing, but it's like, 15 people all like linked up by their arms in the dark leading each other (laughs) because we're all at the same level (laughs) and so I found right mentor and I was like okay I gotta like build a story and like hit that deadline so I put away the first book which I think it's always hard to put away your first novel because in your mind you're like oh my god this is baby that I birthed and it's gonna be amazing but I put that aside and I just started writing this new book and I'll like already I found it different because it was easy to talk about. And I feel like with my first book, it was really hard to talk about because it was about so many different things. I don't think I had the premise right. But with this book, it was really fun to talk about and to see people's reaction because whenever you say sister hand, people are like, what? (laughs) That's weird. (laughs) Um, And so it took me about, I started in January sometime. And I think I got it, like, I was prepared and I was, like, digging for Right Mentor. That's, like, was my goal with this manuscript. And so when I finally got to that, I was like, okay, I'm prepared. I'm going to do this. And I looked at the mentors and, like, Hannah's list of things that she was into was just, like, exactly, like, I was like, oh, my God, Castlevania? Steven Universe? Oh, my God. And I was like, but don't, don't get attached. Look away. <laughs> and then I looked at her partner, Andrew, and all his titles were like so fancy, like the hate you give and all these fans. I was like, ooh, he's going to be surprised when there's like, they walked there and they're, they're at the store. (laughs) I was like, I don't know if he'll, he'll like this, but I took a chance and I just put it out there. And I feel like I'm a big believer in just putting yourself out there and applying to as many things as possible. Cause I mean, if you don't get in anything, you're going to end up where you were in the first place. So 
I did that. And what was, what I think was really good is that when they asked for fold, it had, they asked me some questions about me and my novel. And I think that was the opportunity to like put some of your personality into your answers. And because I think sometimes when you have your manuscript, it's so, it's not like sterile, but it's so like, here is my book. But I feel like with mentorship, it's between people. And so you want to see if you can work together. And so I, I feel like that was really my opportunity to like, this is what I'm trying to do. This is what I want. This is the kind of goof person I am. I am looking for a Gandalf rolled in an avatar Roku. Are you this person? <laughs> like, and we ended up speaking the same language. And that was really cool. And I always say like with my mentors, I feel like I found my people. Like there are so many things that we just naturally get together and it's really fun. And then when I ended up like speaking to Lauren, it was the same way. Like we automatically like clicked. And I think for me, I mean, they've given me so much with my manuscript, but I think the cheerleading is so nice because I think that a lot of times when you have your writing groups, you feel like you people have to read your stuff. And it's not like the excitement or the fangirling that people get. It's just like, they have to read it. But with your mentors, they're like, oh my God, you did this. And holy God, like they, they went there. They're not supposed to go. There. So it's very exciting. And I think they also pushed me because I think like Andrew said that there are always areas in your manuscript where you're like, I don't, I'm not sure about this. So maybe no one will notice. <laughs> and then they poke on that exact spot. You're like, oh God, people saw that. <laughs> so it was nice to have them pushing on those things. And to be honest, it was nice to have people who encouraged me to be gentle with myself. Because I think that I might be a bit of a workaholic with my job. And I think that naturally falls over into writing. And so I think at times I was like, I'm not going to meet this deadline. Because I'm like doing all these other things. They're like, it's okay. Just like calm down. We'll work on this. We'll like figure it out together. You can do this. And I think that that was a really nice like different approach that I've had in my life. And so I think I'm, su I'm super grateful for that. Um, and honestly, after the mentorship, I feel like I pulled them in even more with like the querying and that's where all the questions came up. And so I feel like that's where, <laughs> instead of just the writing, I had all these questions about like, who do I query? When do I query? What do I say? They want this thing, I don't know. So I feel like they've really been able to help me on every part of the journey. And I'm just so grateful. All right. So um, my process has been really long and slow and then really fast and hectic all at once. <laughs> so um, I've pretty much just been writing ever since I was old enough to write. I've been writing stories. And uh, I heard about Nano in college. I'd been writing books even before that. Of course, most of the unfinished books, it was like writing, and then you'd have a new idea, and then you switch to that new idea, and then you get a new idea, and you switch to that one, so nothing would ever get done. But um, as a hobby, it was something that I've always been doing. Um, but just kind of as a hobby, like something that I enjoyed. And then in the end of 2018, I was diagnosed with cancer. And all of a sudden, I was like, man, I really want to publish a book before I die. <laughs> and um, I'm fine now. I'm, I'm pretty much through the woods. But um, at that time, it was like a really profound realization for me that like writing was something I really wanted to do and getting published was something that I seriously wanted to pursue. So in January of 2019, I started to write Lace Wing and Coal Dust, which is the book that I ended up submitting to Write Mentor. And I wrote that through the spring, which was also my last year of graduate school. So that was pretty crazy. Um, and going through uh, my cancer treatment as well. So it was kind of like just if I was doing all this stuff at once, I didn't have time to think about how much stress I was under. <laughs> but uh, that summer, um, in that late that spring, around when I graduated, I joined my very first critique group. And all of the years before that, all the books that I had written, I had just been solo efforts. So this was the very first time that I had ever sought out other people's opinions it, because I was like, okay, if I'm going to write this book, first of all, I actually need to edit it <laughs> because I've never edited a book before this. I just kind of wrote the book and then just like stuck it in the trunk and okay, next book, let's go. Um, so this time I was like, I need to edit it. I need feedback. I need other people's eyes on it. And so that was the first time I both joined Twitter and heard about all of these different Twitter events and competitions and groups uh, like Pitch Wars. 
and pit mad. And so uh, that fall in the September timeframe, I applied to pitch wars um, or pit mad and uh, I wasn't accepted and I didn't even get any requests and I was just completely ignored for that event. But um, I went back and I looked and I saw uh, that in my notes that I had taken for that event, that Andrew was one of the people that had, was a mentor that year. Um, and I had like made notes like next to all the names, like, you know, is this a good fit? Is this a bad fit? And I think next to Andrew, I was like, oh, not a very good fit because Andrew's looking for like literary stuff and like, oh, my book's just like this, you know, crazy fantasy, uh, which is kind of hilarious when I, you know, fast forward to now and I'm like, wow, I was like totally off base there. <laughs> but uh, so through uh, the fall, I kind of did more polishing and more uh, beta readers and edits. And then I heard about there were mentorship programs such as um, Author Mentor Match. And that was in January when you would apply. So I applied to Author Mentor Match. And I got um, the people that I applied to requested more material. So I was like, all right, progress, you know, from Pit Mad where I didn't get any attention at all. Um, but in the end, I didn't get any um, one requesting my book for that one either. But I was like, I, I felt like I was moving in the right direction because before I didn't have any interest and now a couple people requested more material. So I was, you know, learning more about writing query letters and writing synopses and just kind of uh, the whole editing process and query package was totally new to me. So I was just kind of making progress on that. And uh, I kind of got to the point with Lacewing where I was like, I don't know, I think this is as good as I can get. I don't know what else to do with this book. So I'll try one more program, which I think I heard about through Twitter, which was Write Mentor. And I was like, I'll apply to Write Mentor and I'll keep, you know, throwing out a couple more queries because throughout this process, I think I had queried about 20 agents. Um, and then I stopped because I felt like I wasn't getting any interest from agents. So I must be doing something wrong. And I applied to Write Mentor and I was like, nothing happens with Write Mentor. Time to just shelve Lace Swing and Cold Dust and move on to my next book. Um, and I remember reading about Andrew and Hannah as two of the mentors. And I didn't even remember that Andrew was one of the people that I had uh, researched before um, in Pitmad. And so I, uh, you know, kind of in a vacuum was looking through it. And I was like, oh, Hannah's looking for all of this like fantasy stuff. And Andrew said that, you know, they'd be interested in some of these uh, LGBT elements. And I've got some LGBT characters in this book. Um, and I am myself uh, by so I was like okay so you know maybe between you know these two there's there's some good overlap here so I just I, you know let's just give it a shot um, and they accepted me and I was so excited <laughs> and then as Jenna mentioned uh, we met each other and we found out that we were both being mentored by Andrew and Hannah and we started chatting over Twitter DMs as well and just kind of throughout the whole process, encouraging each other and being like, how you doing? You know, do you need to take a break? Can you just unwind or, you know, talk about where you're at in the process right now? So it was awesome to not only get Andrew and Hannah out of this, but also to find another friend through Jenna as well. Um, and this entire process and this entire program has just been amazing for uh, meeting people in the industry and having this resource that's further along in the process than I am that's able to give me advice. Um, in fact, one of the agents that I had previously queried uh, before I applied to the program ended up messaging me in June and she said, hey, I'm interested in your book. Sorry, it's taken so long to get back. Can you send me um, you know, the first 50 pages of your novel. And I was like, what do I do? I'm in Write Mentor and my book is like half disassembled at this point because I'm in the <laughs> middle of edits and like, do I send it to her? Yeah, I don't know. And so I, I talked to Andrew and Hannah and I was like, what should I do? They're like, you could just, you know, let her know that you're in the middle of this program and you're going to have a more solid book at the end of the summer and she'll probably be okay with that. And I was like, okay, it's not going to like, hurt my chances if I tell her no and that she has to wait and they're like no no it's fine like you know you can just chill <laughs> and that's what I did I told her I was like I can give it to you now or you can wait until the end of the summer and she was like oh okay just you know wait till the end of the summer and send it to me after the program and so that's what I did um, but it's, it's just so valuable to have uh, these people who are able to tell you um, you know just things that you wouldn't know who to ask otherwise just having more experience in the industry. So for that, 
I will be always grateful <laughs> for this program and the people that I've met through it. I think accountability is really important, especially, well, with me, I've been saying yes to a lot of promotional things on the lead up to the publication and I realize that they're fun and they're cool, but it doesn't give me a whole lot of time to actually do writing for me. And I like to yeah. sell other stuff in the future and stuff. So I've been kind of doing the same thing. I have a friend who um, we, we created a, a Google Drive file and we're just throwing our first draft of a new idea up there and then giving each other kind of just positivity feedback without really a ton of constructive criticism because it's such an no. early draft because we both said like we really love fan writing fanfic and how like you could post a chapter and expect to hopefully get some comments like right away that was like an immediate gratification and with writing original fiction it's usually you write the whole manuscript and then you send it off to someone and it's like it might take you like months or years to write that manuscript and you just live in a vacuum so it's kind of nice to get that spark of excitement, knowing someone's going to read it and say nice things about it early on. I love that idea. The idea of having an accountability partner that's just for like positivity passes, yep. like positive yeah. feedback. That's fantastic. I need to steal that. I think that's what's beautiful about the Right Mentor community too, is just, and it's so weird to me because it's like UK based, but we're all in America. So most everybody else is British, but I have friends that I've actually like met from Right Mentor. Like we've met up and done ghost hunting adventures and like gotten coffee and had bougie tea. Um, obviously not now because pandemic, but um, having a community, somebody who is going to be there to encourage you because you are going to get rejections. Like the amount of times I've just, you know, sobbed at my computer, I can't even count them. Like those days just happen and you need, you need people in your corner. Definitely. I've actually met a couple people um, through writing groups and critique groups as well. And like I said, I only started doing writing critique groups in 2019. And I have met in real life um, two or three people now from those groups, just because you meet people from all over the world. And some of them end up kind of in your area. And so uh, just, you know, kind of driving a little bit out of the way to meet up and go to a coffee shop and talk about books. Is, it's been a really awesome experience. Yeah, I've met up with um, one person from my Right Mentor cohort back in 2018. I don't know if I remember Melissa Call, Hannah, but she, she's like, she's about 100. Do you? Yeah, she's about like 100 miles away from me. But like we met sort of in the middle after a skating practice I had like in Oakland and we had coffee and I got to meet her son. Um, and just kind of give each other an update on our lives. And then randomly someone else from our cohort um, named Sasha, I can't remember her last name off the top of my head. She wrote something, the slug queen, I think was like the name of the title. Um, recently we ran into each other cause we ended up in the same different discord writing group that had nothing to do with right mentor. <laughs> and um, I just, this path, like Hannah said, is very winding and not necessarily, or the book that you write for Write Mentor, if you ended up in a program like this, is not necessarily the one that is going to get your agent. Or if it gets you an agent, it might not be the one that's your debut. I mean, sometimes it happens that way, but not always. And I, I've mentored for other programs like Pitch Wars too, and they always say the same thing, especially with Pitch Wars, which has kind of a reputation of if you get in, you're gold. And it's like, that's not necessarily true though I mean there are people who get agents different ways years later the the point of these mentorship programs is to like build a community because writing is very community based it's a small world and there's a lot I think there's a lot of internet articles about querying out there but there's nothing that's really tailored to your specific book so you can read a, an article about how to query but it might be better for like an adult romance than your middle grade fantasy and it's really helpful to have some a mentor who's kind of familiar with your age category and genre sort of be there to answer your questions if you have any, I think. And God, when you go on submission too, there's like, it's like a desert. There's like almost nothing you can find out there about direct experience going on sub because usually agents say, you know, be quiet about this. It's like fight club. We don't talk about it. We don't want editors knowing um, where we are in the process. So it, it helps to have someone who's already been there you can ask questions because you might not know them and the publishing industry sometimes it's not very transparent. 
Absolutely agree with Andrew. Um, I kind of had done my research before I joined these programs, like, okay, I think this is how I write a query letter. I think this is how I write a synopsis. But even after, you know, six or nine months of polishing and revising and, and editing those, um, after Write Mentor, I got a request for a three-page synopsis, and I had only written a one-page synopsis. And suddenly I was like, oh my gosh, how do I, what, that's a lot. Like, how do I write a three-page synopsis? And so I went to Hannah and Andrew, and I was like, what do I do? Can I just like add more characters? Or hey, you, like... you did it, and it was awesome. <laughs> You yeah, but I'm so happy it. to have you guys like read it over and be like, yes, this is good. Or you can take this part out or uh, it was just <laughs> great to have you. And then Andrew this summer apparently had to write like a four page synopsis. So <laughs> yeah, it was actually five to six is what she said. Ooh, um, yeah, I submitted a, a two page synopsis to my agent, a book I was trying to sell on proposal. So the editor wanted to know what happened after the proposal pages. And I was like, how how dare someone require me to know like what my book is actually about. Um, <laughs> but I read a two page one and it was, I think Hannah had read the two page one and she was like, this is good. It hits all the plot points. And my agent's like, this is great. There's no emotional arc in this entire story. Um, so she's like, can you maybe like flesh it out a bit? It, it took me a week. And I mean, that was doing it like eight hours a day and I was just stressed out, but yeah, I mean, I, I had to reach out to other people to look at it too, just because I've never written one and I hope I never have to write one that long again, honestly. So you know, <laughs> my editor read it and she's like, this is a lot. And I was like, yeah, it looks terrible. Thanks. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, the, even if you've been in, and I'm still very new to the industry, but I feel like even if you've been in the industry a while, you still might get thrown a curveball. You're not expecting that you need to reach out to someone else who maybe has already gone through that to ask them about this question I think that a lot of people like when they hear a panel like this they're like well this is awesome of course I would want to mentor it's an amazing opportunity they're super great but like what can they do to like make themselves more attractive when they apply for these opportunities because I mean you guys have been on both sides and so you know what it's like to apply and then we know what it's like to be on the other side looking at all the applications so what advice would you have to people like, how do they make themselves stand out? How do they pick the right person, the right fit? Like, what can they do? That's a really good question. Yeah. Andrew, do you I have know. a really good answer? I'm still um, I mean, I have some thoughts. Um, I wanted to kind of respond to Lauren when she mentioned she'd seen me at Pitch Wars and was like, oh, we are not a good fit. And it, it was specifically, too, because you were probably reading a wish list that was like, we want only middle grade contemporary. And you're like, oh, staring at Lisa yep. and Colwing. Yeah, uh, coal dust. And it's because my mentor and I were looking for something very specific. She only wanted to do contemporary. And, and I really wanted to look for LGBTQ stuff. So I was like, okay, you can have the contemporary if I can have this. Um, and that's what we kind of narrowed it down to. So the submissions that we got during Pitch Wars, most of them were really well written. And the stories seemed like they were viable and they would be great for a mentor just not necessarily us and with me and Hannah we had a broader sort of reach and Hannah likes horror and so I felt comfortable doing horror because Hannah was good at horror so I'm like okay yeah let's do fantasy and horror and all this stuff that my other mentor and I weren't comfortable tackling on our own as contemporary writers and so I think the first thing that you could do to make yourself stand out is make sure you read the mentor wish list and have something that they're asking for. I, I actually applied to Pitch Wars after I did Write Mentor um, in 2018 and didn't end up getting in um, myself, but my, my mentor with uh, Pitch Wars last year is actually the, one of the people that I applied to, so we kept in touch. And um, where was I going? Oh, um, I, I was looking at one of the, the mentors application or the wish list, and I thought like, this would be great. Like he really wants like X, X and X that my book has. But like at the very end, he was like, I'm not a good mentor for sports stories. And I was like, well, crap. Like I had everything, <laughs> everything he wants. And then my book is literally about figure skating. And it's like all figure skating. Um, so I don't, even though I'd hit some things on his list, I'm not sure that that would have been a good fit for me. And or him, and I don't think that I, that might have been like a wasted application on my part. So if, if you're looking to apply to a program, make sure that you can apply to mentors who are looking for what you want as specifically as possible. Um, 
And also just realize too, it's like, it's very subjective. I mean, uh, sometimes we find things that we weren't expecting, um, like both of yours, where the voice just grips you. And I, I can't remember who read uh, Lauren's first, but I remember, I think it was me who read Gina's first. And I was like poking at Hannah being like, uh, cause we maybe requested Lauren's first, um, like you had read it before. And then I was like, okay, this is great. Like we're gonna, we've got this good one. And then I was like, oh crap, here's another one that's like really good. And I can't let go of it. Cause I just love the opener so much. So I don't know if I answer the question very well, other than to make sure that you're, you know, applying to people who want what you've written. Well, you and other it, thoughts, Hannah? I, I, I mean, you nailed it, but I, I think I said yesterday, like good writing is good writing. And somebody then was like, what's good writing? And I'm like, I don't know, it depends. <laughs> <laughs> like what is voice? Like <laughs> Exactly. Like it's, it's clear as mud, guys. If, if I had a formula, I wish I had a formula. I'm working on creating a formula for the perfect book. I've been working on it for years now, but it hasn't gone anywhere. Gina, I think you made a, a great point too. I, I think the main thing to remember is not, don't close any doors unless you have to. Like you are not going to waste any opportunity unless you don't take it. So yeah, absolutely. Like my list was very specific this year um, on the things that I like, um, but I actually was crazy. And I took on a third book for Write Mentor. Uh, one of my mentees is not here, two out of three. Um, but she actually wrote a historical fiction from a horse's point of view. And that's like not up my alley at all. Like I really don't do animal stories. I'm not really big into like Napoleonic history, but for some reason I read that book and I was like, I have to have it. Like I have to have it. And the head of Right Mentor was like, no, you can't have it because you already have two books. And I was like, I will <laughs> fight you for it. And uh, even though he's a rugby player, I won't fix Christ. But <laughs> I, I never would have guessed in like a million years that um, that is something that I really loved and could really put myself into. Um, but it was the same thing with Gina and Lauren. Like I read your books and I, <laughs> Andrew, I think I emailed you. I'm like, how do you feel about taking on two <laughs> instead of one? This is literally what I said I wasn't going to do this summer. Um, but yeah. I mean, I was <laughs> in the same we, boat too. That thing that we said we weren't going to do and did anyway, it, but you can't know, you can't know that unless you put yourself out there. You absolutely need to do your research, but even though you do your research doesn't guarantee anything and the complete opposite is true. Just because you might not fit exactly into the parameters that have been specified. I mean, that doesn't mean that you're not, I mean, there's always a chance. You just don't know. Like absolutely if an agent publishes like children's picture books, don't send them erotica. Like you know, there, there are limits, <laughs> but I, I, I firmly believe that you shouldn't um, close any doors unless you have to. Yeah. Never that was that was a fantastic question, Gina. I think like um, Andrea and Hannah have been saying, it it comes down to one doing your research um, and making sure that you know you're as good a fit as you can possibly be, and then two, um, this one's not helpful at all, but like have a hook or voice or, you know, something that's going to grab them, um, which of course is always easier said than done. But yeah, like Hannah was saying at the end too, it's so subjective um, and don't close any doors because, you know, originally I wrote Andrew off on my, you know, pitch wars, was like, oh, not, not a good fit. And then seven months later, you know, they're my, one of my mentors for uh, right mentors. So it, it can be, you know, totally random. Always, I think, um, especially with agents too, just consistently look and see if they've changed their wish list because you might not be a fit for them before, but they changed their wish list and maybe you are now. Um, the one ment or the one agent that got back to me and said, um, "Oh, I want to request your pages." It wasn't for anything that I saw in her. Like I was like, "Oh, we have a lot of the same interests. Okay, I think she'll be a good fit." Um, but the reason why she requested pages is because my book is about a girl who plays the clarinet in middle school and she played the clarinet in middle school and that wasn't anywhere on her profile. You know, it just that happened to be the case. So you really, you really don't know, you know, what element it's going to be that grabs a mentor or an agent's attention. It's, you just got to kind of cast the net widely and as accurately as you think and just kind of, you know, see what comes back. 
So true. And actually, um, this, this happened to me too with my agent. Like I, I've kind of changed my perspective on whether or not you should personalize um, queries because I were, at the time that I was querying, I was like trying to find anything. Like I literally would personalize if I saw an article from like 2011 that I liked um, from an agent and I'd like write something about it. And I was like, that was a decade ago. You don't even know if they believe that anymore. But with my current <laughs> agent, I, I literally couldn't find anything like that wasn't super obvious from her wish list because she's like, I'm looking for stories told from a queer lens. And I'm like, oh, that's me. I don't need to say that because that's literally, she knows that. But um, when she pinged me to have um, our offer call, it was actually like an in-person meetup. She had, she mentioned, you know, and by the way, I used to skate when I was a kid. And like, I was like, well, I wouldn't have known that. Like I had, you know, <laughs> yeah. it's just, mm -hmm. just like your clarinet thing. I was like, well, that's fantastic. I didn't know that though. So, <laughs> and, and I mean, like with mentors, we can't put every little thing on our wish list. I tried to do that. I think in 20, the 2019 cycle, the year before, and it was literally like a 4,000 word novel itself. And I'm not sure how many people actually <laughs> read it. So I tried to be a little bit more succinct this year, but I mean, you never know. I mean, I used to play an instrument. So that was another thing that drew me to yours, Lauren, just because I remember band and like the jitters that came with having to you know, play in front of people when I wasn't really prepared, you know, or whatever. So yeah, yeah you, you really never know. And this is a little bit off um, what Gina's question was, but I wanted to point out too that even if you don't get into the mentor programs, especially if you're active on Twitter, like with Pitch Wars and Write Mentor, they do a lot of events on the lead up to the mentee announcements. And it's a fantastic way to get to know your peers who are also applying. I still keep in touch with people who applied from Write Mentor back in 2018 and didn't get in and follow their journey. Some have now been agented and published and they didn't go through the mentorship program. So I think it's really important to keep that in mind too, is that you're meeting other people who are at a similar stage in your writing careers as you are. So these are your peers, the people that you should be lifting up and supporting and leaning on when you need to. Totally. I, I think that's a really good point because these mentorship programs are really competitive and to set your sights on them as the only avenue to move forward is kind of crazy. So I think that it's important to try to build these communities wherever you are. Like if you could find a writing community, if you could find a friend on Twitter. Um, and I think if you can focus on trying to figure out how to talk about your book and pitch your book, I think that's so important because I think that just like increases your excitement for it because I've kn I know that I've been to writers conferences where people be like what are you writing and I couldn't talk about my book and it's like oh it's a book about a girl with superpowers and I was like oh my god it's like the most and I was like what are you writing because I was like just get the focus off me I don't want to talk about it and I think that that's so important if, for you to build these basics for being a writer just to be able to pitch to talk about your book to write a query and to have these other people in the trenches with you whether it's with a writing group or some kind of like, not AA, but like writing AA. Like you need someone to commiserate with you. You need someone to just like, it's okay. Just like, let's do something else. I think that's just so important to have this writing community. Absolutely. Anyway. And, and oh. mentorship is one aspect of that. But like you said, um, just writing communities in general are, they really do achieve the, the similar same things just um, Write Mentor or uh, uh, Write Hive itself, you know, that we're currently on, um, it, it's a great resource. And if you go on Discord and if you get familiar with Discord, we have agents and editors who are on that Discord who are willing to just answer questions and chat with people like at any given time. So just having that direct line of contact to people who are more familiar with the industry is just completely invaluable. Oh, I know I'm backtracking. I'm circling the wagon a little bit. <laughs> but Andrew, you said something really powerful uh, when you last spoke about um, not, not giving yourself limits too. I think we forget, we, we get so enamored with like, oh, this is the thing. Like I absolutely thought like my first editor is the thing. And then I thought like right mentor is the, thing. like this book is the thing. If you've written one book, you can absolutely write another. And let's say you apply to write mentor with one book. And it doesn't stick apply with another just because you i queried my my uh my agent that i have now lynette i queried her with multiple books before i had the book that got her attention you know i'm not sending her a, a query every week 
but it took me, I think, three books and three tries before she's finally like, yes, I love your writing, but this is the book that I want to sell. So keep, you have to keep going. I, I would really um, advise against getting hung up on the one thing because there is no one thing for anybody. And I mean, we as writers are following our passions, the things that interest us, um, the stories that we can't stop thinking about basically are these characters that won't let go. Whereas agents and editors are looking at it from a little bit more of a marketing perspective. And I always say that, you know, to get an agent or to get a book deal, you need to have talent, of course, but you know, also need to be writing it at the right time for the market. And that's not our job as writers, that's a job as an agent to evaluate or an editor to evaluate. So even if you've written like the most beautiful book, it might not end up getting published and it's completely outside of your control. So I don't think there's anything that you've done wrong by following your passion. And I don't think that you should be writing to the market because like I said, the market, I think you, if anyone's heard any interviews, they're always saying, if you're trying to write to the market of things that are coming out now, you're about two or three years too late because those were acquired. So I have a funny story a while ago. about this book real quick. I don't know if you guys have ever read A Confederacy of Dunces. I have, yeah. So we're, we're living it, right? Funny. <laughs> Do you, right? Um, so the funny thing, though, about John, this is a Pulitzer Prize winner. Um, the funny thing about John Kennedy Tool is he wrote this book that went on to win the Pulitzer. And um, he was so disgruntled, like he could not sell it. He could not get an agent, no publisher would accept it. He got so disgruntled, he actually committed suicide. Um, and it was his mother after his death that took the manuscript and took it to one of his former college professors. And she like harangued this poor professor. I was like, oh, in the name of my dead son, you will read this book. And he's finally like, okay, lady, as long as you get off my front porch, I will read this stupid book and started reading it and found out like, oh, wow, this is really super good. And this book is like absolutely a classic. It's, it's one of the best books I've ever read. But I think that's such the tragedy is thinking that there is, if he, had hung on just a little longer, you know, it would have happened for him. It would have, it could have happened and it would have happened for him before he took drastic measures. So I, I know we all feel really crushed when things aren't going our way or when we feel like we're not foraging a path, but you just can't see behind the scenes that everything that's happened, everything that is happening to you. I look back and see every single rejection. I'm like, yes, I know why I got that rejection. Like that rejection, is just one step on my path to an acceptance. And you you just have to look at it like that. Yeah, and I think the people that you see that are publishing, you know, a book a year or multiple books in one year even, I think like Kate Mesner had 12 books coming out this year, which is just Whoa. mind blowing to me. Um, those books weren't all written this year or even last year. It's this buildup of books that maybe it wasn't the right time to publish at that time. I, I think, you know, there are cycles in the market where there's um, genres of interest that kind of go in and out of style, like dystopian and horror and stuff like that. And maybe you wrote it at the wrong time, but that doesn't mean it won't be the right time in the future. Because I see some people who got book deals after I did, who are suddenly getting like three or four book deals. And I was like, holy crap, am I just being like really lazy? And it's like, no, they had these books written years ago. So I mean, not every book that you wrote 10 years ago is going to get published either. I think some of mine are never going to see the light of day, honestly, but, <laughs> but you never know. I mean, and this is, this is not an easy industry, honestly. And that's why you want to lean on people like your mentors or your peers, because it, it's mostly rejection, unfortunately. Um, but I don't know, for me, it's like the couple acceptances or the couple positive comments keep me going. Um, they're like little carrots dangling in front of me, sort of. So yeah, I don't know. Absolutely take care of yourself. Okay. Absolutely. Like if you need a break, like, you know, I'm just so pleased to see that you're like taking a break because both of you guys are so hard. I mean, Lauren, good for you for your 50,000 words. I want to hear who wins that contest, but take care of yourself. Take care of yourself. Your greatest resource is yourself. And absolutely, if you need a break, take a break. If you need to cry, cry. I actually gather my writer's tears in a little jar and I use them for <laughs> various spell work. You know, like 
take the time that you need and take the space that you need. Like Andrew said, like nobody's journey is the same. Um, nobody's publication is going to look the same and that's okay. Have grace with yourself. Be kind to yourself. It's, it's a very long journey. Gina knows uh, she, she's a runner. You know, it's it's a marathon, not a sprint. You got to face it. You'll be out there a while. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think we're... Um approaching the end of our time so on that which is an amazing note to end on um why don't we just throw out a couple different resources for people who are um, i'm gonna go ahead and drop the so right mentor constantly the uh right mentor children's novel award is getting into swing but there's always like free giveaways they have um conferences i always um i, I give away free critiques always and i know other authors do too like definitely keep in contact with them. Does anyone have any questions that I want to make? I feel like I, we just free floated. I didn't know if they had any specific questions that they wanted to ask. I haven't seen any in the mentorship chat yet, but feel free to pop in whenever or even in the Zoom chat. Looks like Maxwell has a question. While they're asking their question, I'm going to post the links to in there for other mentorship programs. So yeah, ask away. Uh, hi, uh, thank you. So I have the problem of, of momentum. So uh, right now I'm on a big project and I'm, I have about, I, I wanted to keep it under 200,000, but I'm probably going to break that. Anyhow, how far along do we need to be before we start looking at mentors? Because uh, I will write things out of order and jump left and right. But I also, at the same time, will have a large amount of material done. So it, it's, it's just a hot mess I'm constantly working with. How do I know when I've gotten enough to be able to start looking for a mentor? And what's the, uh, and basically, where's that line between, no, you need to still go back, uh, go back to your workshop and keep working, or no, you have something that's workable enough to start sharing? That's a good question. Think, okay. um, one of the one of the uh, one of the weird effects of my method is that what I'll write will not be usual first draft gibberish 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 gibberish, but it's like second or third draft quality, despite the fact that it's all a mishmash out of order. So it's readable, but not complete. Well, yeah. it sounds. If you don't mind, Andrew, I'm going to go ahead and um, go for it. Um, it sounds like you know exactly what you need. So go get a mentor. And the thing about mentors too, is they don't have to be official. You don't have to go through a program. Like getting on writing discords, honestly. Oh, I'm Maxwell, already, I'm already on one. Uh, I've actually been on oh, several. And it's, and you it's, know what and it's I've really done, honestly? One of my, uh, I call her my mama witch. One, she advises me in everything. One of my, uh, my most dear mentors, I honestly read her book. I sent her an email and I'm like, I loved your book, blah, 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 blah. I'm also a writer. Would you mind answering some questions? We hit it off. Like, Completely oh, that's, that's wonderful. It's so great when you can find people like that who, when honestly, you reach out to them, they will yes. reach back. And I honestly think, I mean, of course, you know, like George R. R. Martin is probably a little busy. So you got to be selective who you reach out with. But most yeah. authors who I've reached out to and had honest discussions with have just been so graceful and so kind. So uh, honestly, if somebody comes to me, because I've gotten those emails before too, and are like, hey, I need some help. Do you have time to help me? If I have time to help them, I absolutely will because so many people have helped me in the past. So I'd absolutely say like, go out, apply for programs. And even if you, if it says you ha need a completed manuscript, that's gonna be one thing, but don't let that stop you from reaching out and finding that, uh, that Gandalf or that Morpheus. Thanks. <laughs> Andrew, do you have thoughts on that? <laughs> I was going to say, make sure you follow their instructions if they say completed manuscripts, you should probably have one. But I mean, I know a lot of them to say it should be a completed manuscript as polished as you can make it. And I'll be honest, I had just finished writing on on the edges first draft when I applied to write mentor. It was a hot mess. Like I was lucky with that one that the plot structure was basically from A to point A to point Z and it was like, okay. But I, it was really bad. I'm like, I guess I'm really glad that only one person on earth has ever read that other than me. And it was my mentor because I, I don't know, but um, yeah, I wouldn't roll yourself out. I know with Pitch Wars too, they specifically like push for it, it better be really polished. Um, and I don't know, I feel like mentorship programs, 
you're looking for something that you think you can help as a mentor, but you're also looking for something that you love enough that you're willing to read it multiple times. So, you know, if someone loves something and they know it's going to need more work, that doesn't automatically eliminate it from consideration for a lot of mentors. So that would be my thought. Yeah. If you want a mentor, go for it. Um, You know, if you, if you want one, then you're ready to apply for one. Uh, But like Andrew said, if there's specific requirements, like you have to have a completed manuscript, make sure you have a completed manuscript before you submit to that specific program. Thanks. But again, mentorship doesn't have to be official either. There are times where you don't even have to go to a program. Like it's, it's more about finding your person than it is like getting into a specific program. Yeah. Before Right Mentor, um, SK, who's listening in right now, was definitely one of my biggest um, inspirations and uh, just an amazing amount of help for everything that I was doing at the time where I first started editing my book and having, you know, my first set of eyes on my book apart from my own. So thank you, SK, everything you've done. Well, I don't see any other questions coming in, so I think um, we can just probably wrap it up video-wise on that front and then check out the Discord and see if there's any chats going on there. But thank you all so much for coming, and thank you, Hannah, Andrew, and Gina, for being here and doing this with me. It's been such a cool experience. I'm so glad that you guys were able to make it. Thanks for asking us. all be together. Thank you so much for having us. Yeah, thank you.